Hey guys, I am just popping in to talk to you about something that I just came across in one of my cases um, that I thought would be kind of a interesting thing to point out. Um, so this is a 14 year old, what is this, castrated male, the breed abbreviation is CT. So I'm guessing that's Karen Terrier. Sometimes I don't know the abbreviations to the breeds and it's kind of like a fun guessing game um, of what, what they are. So CT, I guess probably Karen Terrier. Um, that is um, that he presented to his vet and he has a six by five centimeter soft movable mass on his neck. Um, so looking at the sample in this case, we've definitely got some adipocytes in here, a little fat cells popping in. You can see them right here. Uh, let me turn on my arrow. Uh, too bright. I hope you guys are. Let's do. Let's do red. It stands out a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of not doing a good job here with it being. It's like blowing out like it's on the sun. <laughs> but hopefully you can see it. Um, so these are adipocytes. You can see the big round cell and then the little nucleus inside. Here's another one. So these are just fat cells and there are a bunch of these on this slide. Here's a, a group that's more collapsed. So all the fat bubbles have kind of uh, collapsed on themselves and formed this big blob of, of cellular material here and you can still see some of them have this um, Oh my gosh, my air looks hot pink now. That's kind of fun. But uh, <laughs> I guess it just needed a second to get warmed up. Um, but yeah, so these guys have have their lipids still inside of the, of the cell, but a lot of these are just collapsed. And you can see the stringy cellular material here. Um, there's some blood in here. If we get a little bit closer, we can see um, that in more detail, but it's not really important. So red blood cells and then all this clear space within these this protonaceous background is just free lipid from the ruptured adipocytes. So again, more adipocytes. And so this is probably a lipoma. Um, I'm not wanting to necessarily talk about that though in this case. What I wanted to show you guys was all of, oh, more fat. There are these dense groups of cells that you can, that are popping up in the sample here and there. And I want to get, oh, there was a really good, a good group earlier um, that I wanted to show you. Here's some, some good stuff here. This is all mixed up with fat. So it's a little bit tough to see. I want to make sure, oh, okay. So I'm focusing in and out. And can you guys see all those striations? So in here, look right in here, and you can see those lines that are all throughout this material. So this is skeletal muscle, and this is completely normal skeletal muscle. I'm going to find some more while I'm talking. Um, I mean, it's everywhere. The sample had a lot of it. Um, but skeletal muscle can definitely come into your samples for whatever reason, you just got a little extra excited about doing the aspirate and started jabbing around and picked up some normal skeletal muscle along with your sample. But I wanted to point this out because sometimes people don't know what this is and they, you know, if you don't know what it is and it might concern you that it's something important, but here's some more of it. And again, you can see those striations in there where those lines are are all within this skeletal muscle, um, which is what normal skeletal muscle looks like. And you might say, well, how do I know if that's, how do I know that's not abnormal skeletal muscle? Well, if we have a tumor of skeletal muscle origin or like a sarcoma, those cells are going to be big and nasty and spindeloid, um, and they're going to look very scary. It's going to look like any other sarcoma. The, this is not a sarcoma, obviously. This is just um, normal, happy, everyday skeletal muscle, no big deal. So if you see this, don't be alarmed.